Hi everyone, uh, my name is Desh Gakhar and I am a postdoc uh, in the mathematics department at the University of Oklahoma. Uh, in this uh, tutorial, I want to uh, talk about sliding uh, window persistence and this particular video uh, would serve uh, as a broad uh, introduction. So what is it? Um, this is a framework that was uh, recently developed uh, for recurrence detection uh, using uh, two ingredients, uh, sliding window embeddings and persistent homology. Uh, now persistent homology uh, is, uh, it's a computational and algebraic tool that, you, that is used in topological data analysis uh, for uh, feature detection. Um, and uh, if you go to AATRN's uh, YouTube channel, you'll find plenty of tutorials for persistence. Uh, so please uh, feel free to refer to them uh, if need arises. Um, the other ingredient, uh, sliding window embedding, uh, is what I'm going to focus on uh, in this particular video. So uh, how do we define it? Uh, for a complex valued function, uh, f, and embedding parameters d and tau, uh, where d is called the embedding dimension, and uh, tau is called uh, the time delay. The sliding window embedding of f uh, based at d uh, is this d plus one uh, dimensional uh, vector uh, with values f of t, f of t plus tau, f of t plus two tau, so on, till f of t plus d tau. Now let's uh, break this uh, definition down uh, into pictures to understand it a little better. So what we are computing is the following. So let's say we have a function. Um, what we do, uh, we fix a window of uh, size d tau uh, and we place it on the function, let's say starting at uh, time t. And then when we slide uh, this window to the right, uh, we're going to get these different uh, snapshots. So we have a collection of these snapshots and that is what we want to study and say something about uh, the function itself. So to study the snapshot, uh, what we do is we, we take each of the window sizes, we partition it into, uh, in into D pieces and at each of the partition values, we evaluate the function and concatenate uh, these uh, values to actually get um, my sliding window embedding at t. Uh, and when we do it for enough values of t, uh, we get something called the sliding window point cloud. Um, and that is what uh, will serve as an input to the persistent homology algorithm. So we've seen what it is, but uh, now I want to talk about why does this make sense mathematically? So our story starts uh, at the level of uh, dynamical systems. Um, so essentially a, a manifold and a diffeomorphism. Uh, and if I choose uh, like an initial point, uh, I can keep applying the diffeomorphism to the manifold and see what happens to the images uh, of my, this initial point X naught. So, you know, it goes from X naught to X1 to X2 and so on. Uh, so it gives me a trajectory. Um, and if f is a function from the manifold to the real numbers or the complex numbers, um, we, uh, you know, we can, uh, we can get a time series associated to this trajectory uh, of the uh, initial uh, point x naught uh, and the dynamical system. So that begs the question, uh, if I have time series that has been observed uh, from a dynamical system, can I recover any information about the original track? Um, I missed uh, saying this, but f is what we call an observation function uh, in this scenario. So this, uh, this question uh, is answered by Tarkin's embedding theorem, which uh, came out in the early 1980s. And it says that if uh, M is a compact M dimensional manifold, and if phi is a diffeomorphism and F is an observation function uh, with sufficient regularity, then it is a genetic property of the pair uh, phi and F that the vector valued function uh, from the manifold M uh, to the 
Euclidean space of uh, dimension 2m plus 1 uh, defined by the observation of uh, the trajectory is actually an embedding. So what this gives us is that if you do have a time series that has been observed from a trajectory uh, in, a in a dynamical system uh, using Takan's embedding, we can recover something uh, homeomorphic to the original uh, shape. For the remainder of the talk, I am going to focus on a particular manifold, uh, in particular, uh, the two torus. So the squares that you see on the screen are flat representations of a two torus, and I'm going to consider two dynamical systems. So on the left, uh, in the green color, uh, my dynamical system takes my point zero zero uh, across the manifold uh, with the slope uh, three, uh, and you will see that uh, it you know it actually comes back to uh, the origin. On the right, uh, in this pinkish purple uh, color, uh, my uh, origin uh, actually moves uh, with a slope of square root of three under the dynamical system. So on the left, my trajectory uh, is repetitive in nature. So it's actually circular, uh, while on the right, my trajectory uh, is dense in this two torus. Now, I am focusing on uh, these dynamical systems on a torus uh, because observations of these dynamical systems actually give rise to recurrent functions. So there's essentially two types of recurrences and they're both characterized by a collection of real numbers, uh, which we call frequencies. Uh, and if it happens that all pairwise ratios are rational, uh, then we get a periodic behavior or a periodic function, for example, cosine of t plus cosine of 3t. Uh, but if at least one of uh, the ratios, uh, pairwise ratios of frequencies is irrational, we get something called quasi-periodicity, for example, in the function cosine t plus cosine square root of 3t. Now, the first function, uh, the periodic function, is an observation uh, of the circular trajectory, uh, and the second function, the quasi-periodic one, uh, is an observation of the dense trajectory in the two torus. So uh, for the first function, we choose appropriate parameters uh, and uh, for sufficient points, we compute uh, the sliding window uh, point cloud uh, and we see that what we get back is essentially something uh, uh, homeomorphic to a circular trajectory. Uh, similarly, for appropriate values of the embedding parameters, um, we get back uh, something homeomorphic to a two torus. Now, I do want to comment that the pictures on the right, uh, the sliding window point cloud pictures, are uh, not the actual pictures, but the PCA representations in three dimensions, because the actual sliding window point clouds uh, sit in R4. Now, once we have the sliding window point clouds, we can just uh, use the RIPS persistent homology to actually uh, confirm that these shapes are indeed what math promises us that they'll be. Uh, so the RIPS uh, persistence diagram of the first uh, shape in green is, yeah, is going to be this, and it just tells us that there is only one one dimensional cycle, and uh, that tells us that the shape is essentially a topological circle. Um, and similarly, the persistence diagram on the bottom tells us that uh, we get a topological torus because there are two uh, one cycles and one two cycle. So the last thing uh, I want to uh, mention before I uh, end this little uh, video uh, is, uh, you know, how do we actually choose a D and tau? So like the, the details require a little bit more work. So I am not going to mention them here, but vaguely speaking, the dimension D uh, needs to be big enough to allow the circular and toroidal features to survive, but not too big uh, that it runs into a computational trouble. Um, and the time delay needs to be chosen carefully to amplify the circular and toroidal features. And typically it is obtained by solving a minimization problem. And my understanding is that uh, often uh, 
you can get like a perfect uh, a perfect time delay uh, for periodic functions but uh, for quasi periodic functions uh, you might not get a perfect uh, choice of tau um, and with this i would like to end uh, this tutorial I, I hope things were clear uh, feel free to email me if there are any questions uh, thank you